The British luxury goods firm Burberry has also released its latest numbers and it says sales in the first three months of this year rose 10% to $770 million, and there was particularly strong sales growth in Hong Kong and China. Let's speak to Douglas McNeil, Investment Director at Charles Stanley, who joins us from the London Stock Exchange. Uh, nice to talk to you, Douglas. Uh, interesting to note that I guess when these figures, they do reflect, do they, the Lunar New Year break and the fact that a lot of spending takes place in the run-up to that? Yes, that's right. But what we've seen is a reassuring statement because there was quite a bit of nervousness in the run-up to, to this statement. We've seen a few discouraging data points coming out of China in particular. Recently, we saw relatively disappointing GDP figures earlier this week. Uh, we've seen that sales of some other luxury items like Ferrari cars, for example, and Scotch whiskey uh, seem to have been falling in the early part of this year. Um, so there was some nervousness around uh, and Burberry seems to have dispelled those with the statement this morning. So tell us more about what they had to say then about the future and really is, is the success of, you know, for Burberry and, and its peers dependent on China and other Asian economies? Well, increasingly so. I mean, we see from the, the statement today that sales to China or Asia in general are now up to about 45 percent of the total. Uh, that's, of course, been a, a long-standing trend. That will continue. They need to make sure that they get China right. Um, China is going to carry on being a very promising market, I think, but it's possibly going to be a, a lower growing market than in the past, and they need to make sure that they cope with that. They're also pushing into perfumes and beauty products. That's something they've licensed out in the past. They've bought back the license at uh, considerable costs, some hundred million pounds this year. They have to make sure that they can make a success of that. And tell us, as you say, about the changing demands for luxury goods, because some companies are succeeding, whereas others aren't in that market of, of China and other developing economies in Asia. Yeah, it's been a very mixed picture of late. We've seen some luxury goods companies struggle. We saw Mulberry, for example, uh, issue a profit warning last month. Uh, Tiffany ha had a very difficult year last year. Some better data out of, out of, uh, out of them recently. Hermes, uh, the French uh, company, seemed to have sailed through all of it largely unscathed. So um, I think what you're seeing is a, a picture that's getting more complex. It used to be the case that simply by betting on China, a luxury goods company could be almost assured of success. Now they're having to work a bit harder for that success.